made a good choice to come into the house of the Lord today. No matter where you are on your Jesus journey, you may not know him, I hope you do, but you may not know him, but you may have known him for years. We get the opportunity to grow in that every day. And you've come amongst other believers who gather together to hear God's word and to hear music that brings praise to him. God is glad you are in his house. Stay with me if you will. We're going to sing a song we're familiar with, Family of God. We're going to sing it through twice. <clears throat> I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain in flag and flag. Join hands with Jesus as we travel this song. Oh, I'm part of the family. The good time in the house of the Lord today. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Amen. We have some birthdays we need to celebrate. My wife had a birthday this has a birthday coming up this week. I better get it right after 30 years. My wife has a birthday this week, but we also have someone else who had a birthday, the sweet 16 named Neilan Yates. So we want to make sure we wish Neelan a happy birthday also. Let's sing happy birthday real quick. Now I do. I want to say a special thank you to Tammy and all of those who came and helped. We had a really good time last night. A little sore today, but we had a really good time last night. Um, today is Bank Sunday. What we do is we collect our change all month long. We come and put it in the church house on the last Sunday of the month, and it goes to pay on our building, which, amen, hallelujah. I want you to look at that loan balance that it's down to $25,442. <laughs> coming on down, coming on down. From 1.6. God's good. All the, all the time? Um, United Youth Weekend will be March the 1st through the 2nd. Next Sunday, we'll start our week of prayer for North American Missions and the Annie Armstrong Easter Offering. Um, Open Door Pregnancy Centers, Let Your Light Shine, will be at Fiddle D Farms 6 to 8 p.m. on March the 4th. Um, on March the 5th, go out and vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for, just vote. Take, exercise your right as an American. Um, that night, we'll have a deacons meeting, and then on March the 6th, we'll have a building and grounds meeting with our dinner and missions following. <clears throat> 
get your RA racers ready. If you haven't got one and you would like to do that, they're downstairs in the old adult two classroom. So help with that. Uh, if you would like to do that, and there is an announcement about that in the bulletin. Um, I need to make a special announcement this morning. It's that time of year. We've got to put together a nominating committee, and we've got a seat that a couple of people on that committee, which will be your Sunday school director and your discipleship training director. Um, Sunday school director is Jeff DeLone. Discipleship training, training director is Sarah Phelan. We need to have a vote for them. We will do that next Sunday in a special call business meeting. Special call business meeting next Sunday. Okay? And that's the only thing we can vote for during that time period. Nothing else can come up. Um, Churchwide yard sale. As you're going through spring cleaning, getting stuff out, if you've got some things that you would like to get rid of and that we can sell and raise money, that money is going to go for OCC. So bring that yard sale stuff, and we will collect it here and have all that ready to go to help raise on money that will help with different facets of Operation Christmas Child. Any other announcements? We need candy for the Easter egg hunt, which is March, March the 23rd. We need the candy by March the 17th. Any other announcements? Okay. If not, we'll have our deacon prayer. Prayer. Scripture of the month. I'm getting ahead of myself. Scripture of the month. Romans 5, 10 through 11. This will be the last time we do this one. We'll move to a different one next week, so we're going to do it twice, okay? You ready? For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son, when we were still His enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful relationship with God. Because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Romans 5, 10 through 11. Let's do it one more time. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son, while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Romans 5, 10 through 11. Deacon prayer. Lord Jesus, we're thankful for the privilege of coming to your house this morning. Thankful for each and every person that's here, Lord. I pray that you... <laughs> Keep your hand, your hand upon everyone that's here, Lord, those that couldn't be there. Touch them and bless them and take care of them. Lord, have your way in this service this morning. Let us walk out of here just a little bit closer to you than when we come in. Let us worship you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue singing about that awesome God. Uh, 353 in your hymnals, I know whom I have believed.
good news. And Brother Chad's going to do it from the word. We're going to do it through song. Christ was born in a distant land. Tell the good news, tell the good news. Live on earth for the good of man. Tell the good news, tell the good news. Tell the good news, tell the good news. Tell the good news. We're going to talk this morning about a word called grace. Grace is... What's grace? What's grace? <laughs> grace is whenever we don't get what we deserve. It's whenever we realize that someone else is, has taken care of what we should have done. So it's kind of like this. Have you ever got away with something, but mom and dad knew about it, and they sit down and they really talked to you and said, you know what, we got to deal with this. There's got to be a change in the way you're behaving, right? I didn't. Has, has, has that ever happened? No. Yes. It hadn't happened? No. Yes, I think I need to talk to your parents in a little bit, okay? Yes. It has? Yeah, and you? So you? So you don't think I need to talk about lying next week? No? no? Okay. The, the, Bible, the Bible says that there was a man named Paul. And Paul, Paul, his life was so changed by God that he was one who was persecuting the church. He was one who was making sure believers were put to death. No. And God changed his life met him in a way that dramatically changed his life. And you know what happened? Right. Now Paul writes the majority of the New Testament. His life is so changed and it's being helped to help build the church. It's completely different. You know, there's times where we'll look at our life or look at our behavior and we'll think, I did this, but I don't want to do that again. I want my life to be completely different. And the reason why we want our life to be completely different is because we've chosen to follow Christ. The scripture says, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than you all, yet not I, but the grace of God which is in me. That grace is working in you. That grace where mom and dad take time to sit down and explain to you. That time where they may not necessarily give you a whooping. They may not put you in time out. They may not take something away, but they sit down and they say, we want, your, we want to show you what happened in our life and how your life is going to be completely different. And you change your life because of that, right? You listen to mom and dad, right? So what are we going to do? Are we going to listen to mom and dad? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's... let's Let's, let's pray. 
Let's, hold on. Let's pray. Put your hands together. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you now, Lord. Lord, help us understand your grace and help our lives change to match your word. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. don't worry we know they were lying we know you discipline and talk to them we do but, uh, whew, kids can be hard can't they never had any hmm. stand with me if you will though we're gonna sing let others see jesus in you this message that touched their hearts it was known 
Paul writes how they were talking about it in other communities. Amen? I want people to talk about what's going on in Ebenezer Baptist Church. I want people to talk about lives being changed, people's lives being restored, and having hope. Don't you? But I don't want them to talk just as a reflection of Ebenezer Baptist Church. I just want God to do something in the lives of believers here locally, and God use us. That message was read. You know what? You're the Bible that many people will read. I go back in my early years of ministry. There's things that I did. And it seems to me at times I pointed more to condemnation than hope. I regret some of those. I want people to have hope. I don't want to take the word and just cut people up. I want people to have hope. I want the gospel to penetrate the life and to change that life. I want to communicate a God, yes, who calls people to repentance. We should call to repent. But whenever somebody repents, we need to celebrate. And we don't need to beat them down anymore. And we don't beat people to get them to repent. We allow the gospel to change the life. This is what the text says. You may not like it. I may not like it. But this is what God says. And if God says it, so. It doesn't matter if you believe it. Fawcett and Brown in their commentary on the Bible says, this is not, there's, There is not so powerful a sermon in the world as a consistent Christian life. The eye of the world takes in more than the ear. Christian lives are the only religious books the world reads. What is your message? Your message should confirm the work of Christ in you. Your message should confirm the work of Christ in you. Whenever Paul writes the book of 1 Corinthians, whenever he writes them, he says, I thank my God always concerning you. Of course, back to that letter writing, he's writing the church to encourage them. But by the grace of God which is given you in Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him. In all, what are they concerned with? Utterance and knowledge. So he says, with all the utterances, with all the knowledge, with everything that's taken place. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. What was confirmed? The testimony of Christ. Y'all are awake this morning. Come on now. That testimony was confirmed. The gospel of Christ changed you. Your testimony was confirmed. So that you should come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who also will confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called to the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He called you to fellowship with himself, but he calls you to fellowship with us. That's why he's writing the church. And as we fellowship, you know what? We're going to disagree. Amen. Agree to disagree. But let's come together for the joy of Jesus Christ and the proclamation and the declaration of the gospel. And the way we do that is we communicate the gospel in the way we live our lives. Ignatius said, Give unbelievers the chance of believing through you. Consider yourselves employed by God. Your life's the form of language in which he addresses them. Be mild when they are angry, humble when they are haughty, to their blasphemy, oppose prayer without ceasing. To their inconsistency, a steadfast adherence to your faith. 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 What is this message? Well, if we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verses 12 through 18, he says, If others are partaker of this right of you, are we not even more? Nevertheless, we have used this right. We have not used this right, but endured all things lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. He goes on to say, Even so, Lord, has commended for those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. In other words, for this church, 
to help start for it to grow. The things that were taking place, other churches were sending money to help the leadership. Not this church. But you know what happens? This church, all of a sudden, God's wanting to use it, and the gospel will change. And you know what churches should do? They'll support each other. They support each other. If, if we want to keep, if we want to reach Ebenezer, the same number whenever you look across the board, the association is going to have to double in size. Or there's going to be so many people moving in here, the reach we have is going to be so small. Does that make sense? We've got to find ways to help other churches to support them. We've got to plant new churches. We've got to grow. We've got to reach the lost. We've got to encourage those. We've got to bring people back into the fold. Amen? Amen. Doesn't the gospel do that? You on board with that? We must not hinder the gospel. We must give, we must, with our resources, use whatever for the advancement of the gospel here locally. Paul writes, for I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For necessity is laid upon me, yes. Woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. What is my reward then? That when I preach the gospel, I may present the gospel of Christ without charge. That I may not abuse the authority of the gospel. We must never hinder the gospel. We must learn to endure in hard times. We must persevere. God writes about persevering. Listen, there's going to be hard times, church. We must persevere through them. We must push through them. There's going to be people who attack you. There's going to be people who don't like you. The problem's not you. The problem may be, but it could be them. You know what? Let's address what we've got to address, but let's move forward. Why? Because it's the gospel. And it's the gospel that's at work in my life and your life. So we endure during the hard times so that fruit will be bare during the better times. But the message is still the same. Preach the gospel amen we're getting there he boasts in the work of the gospel in, 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 in second corinthians chapter 1 verse 12 our boasting is this the testimony of our conscience that we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity not with fleshly wisdom but by the grace of god and more abundantly toward you you think they're going to grab this idea of the gospel Whenever you go back to the book of 1 Corinthians, he's over and over pounded the gospel into them. But he writes, he says, Brethren, I declare to you, which I preached to you, when you also received and where you stand, by which you also are saved, if you hold fast that the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, I delivered to you first of all that which I also received. Now here's the gospel. He's declaring the gospel first. You ready? That Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried. He rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. He was seen. Whenever you go back, the rest of that time, he, he, he's having to, he just presents the gospel to him, and he's already having to give him a defense of the resurrection. If you don't believe the resurrection, everything else is in vain, right? So we come back and we're looking at this text. And you know what? Christ told you to pick up your cross and follow him. You know what they did to him? Y'all hear? What did they do to him? They crucified him. Do you know what the world will do to you for following Christ? Endure. Persevere. Push through. Be Christ to others. Share the gospel. Because our reward is in heaven. Take everything away. I don't care. What matters to me is the gospel. Because I know I'm going to see my Christ one day. And I want to make sure I'm presenting that message. It 
it's 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. It starts, We, however, will not boast beyond the measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us. That sphere especially included you. We're not overextending ourselves, as though our authority did not extend to you. For it was to you that we came with the gospel. Not boasting of the things beyond measure that is in other men's labors, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere to preach the gospel in regions beyond you and not boast into another man's sphere of accomplishments. Then he writes, He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. For not he who commends himself does approve, but he whom the Lord commends. It's God who's at work. Present the gospel. Don't abuse the gospel. In the book of Romans, he writes, in Romans chapter 15, starting in 18, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me, in word and deed, to make the Gentiles obedient, They're wanting to push Paul out of line. He says, in mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and around to Hyperion, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. For it is written, to him who he has not announced, they shall see, and those who have not heard shall understand. He carries the gospel. You know what? I want to see people get excited about church. I want to see others come back. I want to see people who've left us. I want to see them come back, get back involved in the church. I want to see people who are not involved in a church somewhere. If they want to come here and get involved, amen. I'm all for that. But you know what I really want to see? I want to see people who don't know Christ come to know Christ. I want to see... People who are living in a way that they think that they're condemned to hell and all of a sudden come to understand that they have hope and life in Christ Jesus. We want to do that. We have to understand that we are the letter of Christ. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered to us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. You carry Christ's message as a believer. You're the deliverer. You're the letter that is delivered through your life. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ. The Lord is the one who commends, for he, for not he who commends himself is approved. But the Lord commends. The Lord, the people are watching your life, and as they watch your life, they realize that there's things that are changing in your life according to this gospel. And the Lord is commending, so people are starting to watch you, and they're going to start asking questions. Why do you not do what you used to do? Why is your life changing? What's going on here? And you share the gospel. And hopefully it changes their life. The Lord will commend. The Lord will give you the message. And the Lord has given the messenger. Who's the messenger? I want you to say, ready? We're going to say, I am, real loud. Ready? Who's the messenger? I am. We own it, right? And the seal of the work of God is the changing lives of his followers. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 2, If I'm not an apostle to others, yet doubtless I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. Let others see Jesus in us. Believers are Christ. Minister. Not, we, we don't just reach the lost, but we minister to the body of Christ. Clearly, you are an epistle to Christ. Ministered by us. We minister to each other. What does minister be? That, that, that's a term we don't use much. We come alongside. We live beside. We share meals together. We share life together. 
but we also share in the word together. In other words, do you know what that means? I'm in the word daily. Do you know what that means? You're in the word daily. And that means that we encourage each other in the and the word points toward the the gospel. And there's good news that's coming about every day. You know what? I don't have to turn on the news every morning because I've got good news and the world can't touch it. This message of God is written on the believer's life. Written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is the heart. This message is not delivered by means of the delivery of the day. Not with ink and paper, not with text and email, or Instagram, or whatever social media there is. The message is written by the living God through His Spirit. The writer of the message is God. The recommender of that message is God. The one who recommends the letter of your life as others are reading it is God. I want to make sure that they're seeing God in that message, don't you? The delivery method, go back. It's not ink, it's not paper, it's text and email. It is The delivery method of the letter from God is your life. Listen, I want you to know, Christ knows your weakness. He knows the weakness of everyone, and he chose to use you. Christ knows the tugs of the emotional message. He knows the tugs of emotionalism. He doesn't want us to get so wrapped up into it, yet you will get emotional. Love is an emotion. Crying is an emotion. Hate is an emotion, isn't it? We don't run from our emotions, but we use our emotions in the gospel, the advancement thereof. We point others to the gospel, but you don't let our emotions guide our life. What guides our life is the gospel. Y'all are catching on. God loves you so much that he gave his son. And he shares that message through believers. Go into all the world. Make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go back to last week's message. Now thanks be to God, who also in Christ, that triumphant memory of Christ, to see diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. We are to God, the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one who are the aroma of death leading to death, and the other the aroma of life leading to, li- leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? We come back to that same message. Listen, Christ loves those who will receive this message, but not everybody's going to receive this message. Not everybody's going to accept the good news. Some people enjoy wallowing with the hogs. Christ uses you, the letter, recommending the lives of other believers that will also point toward Christ. You know what? I may can't relate with somebody, but you can, and I can guarantee you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up the phone call, and I'm going to call you, and I'm going to say, share your life story with them. Amen? This message communicates the work of the law by the, li- by the life-giving God. We're going to get into this more next week, but when he had made an end of the speaking with him on Mount Sinai, Moses is given two tablets. This is of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. These tablets were the work of God in verses 30, in 32, 16, and the writing was the, written, was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. This letter that is written, it's written by God. But then we come back to this letter writer. The letter writer is trustworthy. We have such trust through Christ toward God. We can trust in him, and we can trust in the message. How trustworthy is message? He told you he was coming, and he came. He told you he was sinless. He was sinless. He told you he died for your sins, and he rose again and ascended into the heavens. And guess what? People saw it. It happened. 
There was a great many witnesses, and that is the gospel. And he's told you he's coming back. And I got one question for you, church. Are you ready? Because I'm telling you, that message is trustworthy. You can hold to it. But not only is the message trustworthy, that message is sufficient. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves in thinking of anything, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, as being for ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. He made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Listen, you go back to chapter 2, verse 16, to the one who are the aroma of death leading to death, to the other the aroma of life leading to life. Who is sufficient for these things? Christ. Because he's the one who gives life. Not by the spirit of the letter. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Go back to the Apostle John. John in chapter 3, and I'm wrapping up. He has received his testimony, has certified that God is true. For he in whom Christ, God has since speaks the words of God. For God did not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has every last, everlasting life. And he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides in him. Amen. I don't know about you. But I want to point to the one who is trustworthy, who is sufficient. And I want to point to life. Are you with me, church? Let's let the gospel be seen in our lives. You say, I'm here this morning, and I don't know about this gospel. I've never accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. This is what you do. You just say, God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned. I've done things that I know that do not please you. I've done things that I know are contrary to your word. I want to turn away from those things, and it's my desire to follow you from this point forward. Will you come into my life? And I want to make you my Lord. Thank you for saving me. If you do that, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about next steps because now you're a child of God. You're a part of the family of God that we sang about this morning. Amen? Amen. We'll talk about baptism. We'll talk about being a church member. We'll talk about growing as a believer. But folks, it's not just for those who are deconverts. We all go back to the gospel. Is the good news still changing your life today? If it's not, we need to open up our old, hard, cold lives, don't we? And allow the gospel to touch us. Amen? Amen? Please stand. Father God, we come to you now, Lord. We thank you for this word, Father, Lord. Thank you for the message. Thank you, Lord, for speaking through Paul to us in this letter. But Father God, we thank you for the reminder that our lives are a living letter. That our lives, Father, Lord, are being read by so many people. Lord, help us communicate the gospel and point others to you, but continue to change our life, not just because of what's happening with others, Lord. We want to grow in the good news of you in our life. We want to continue to allow you to work, Father, Lord. Change us. Lord, start with me. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. See you.
God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. You know, God gives you a message. He wants it preached. You know, sometimes the hardest person or the person that really needs to hear that message is you. Man, God's good, isn't he? He's at work in our lives. Let's continue to allow him to change us. Who is our closing prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing Brother Chad to send you, give your message, Lord, and just um, let us go out in this in the world and just let others see Jesus in us, Lord. And just be with everybody on the prayer list, Lord. You know each and every soul out there, Lord. Just be with them and have your will be done, Lord. These things we pray. Amen.